Hello, everybody. Thank you once again for joining our podcast here on Eruption. Um, today, I'm joined by Fred Oyetayo. Fred Oyetayo is the co-founder of Fresco B. As usual, I will allow Fred to explain what his company is and who he is. So we'll just start, Fred. First of all, who are you? Where are you from? And which schools did you attend? Or are you currently attending? Oh, great. Uh, so... Hello everyone, my name is Fred Oyetayo and uh, I'm currently co-founder and CEO of Festival. Uh, so Festival is, uh, is a technology company into products and services. Uh, some of our products include Festival Music, uh, which is a digital music distribution app for African artists. Uh, it's currently being used by more than 30,000 African artists and from artists from across the world. Uh, we also have a procedure which allows users to be absolutely document. We have flexible links, which is a smart link, uh, that allows artists to share their songs with, easily with their fans and their users. Uh, we also have, um, web one, uh, which allows users to also register businesses in Nigeria, Ghana, or in Kenya. Uh, so we also have services along the side. We offer consultancy work. Uh, to a lot of companies in Nigeria and also all around the world. Uh, so currently we service some of the biggest companies in India like Danlote, uh, the First Bank, Access Bank, uh, and the rest. So basically that sums up most of what I do. I oversee the general activities and uh, I'm directly responsible for the products division also. Uh, so that forms the basis of what we do and uh, who I am. Um, interesting. Um, I heard thirty thousand but artists, but like I wait on that. I don't want to go back a bit, right? So just to know Fred a bit more. Um, where are you from? Like your state, right? The schools, maybe like primary, secondary, university that you attended, the degree you attended, right? Just to understand, probably how you were able to start a company like First of All. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm from I'm from Ocean State. Um. I attended the primary and secondary school national state. I attended the uh, Catholic schools. Uh, and then I proceeded to study law at uh, also Royal University. So I studied law before and after then I went to the Nigerian Law School. I also have a master's degree in law uh, that I obtained from the University of Lagos in 2018. Oh, excellent. So I see the deep law background um, that you have. Yeah. Was laws first of all? Did you go to a day school, secondary school, a boarding school? Yeah, yes, I uh, attended. Uh, although it's uh, the school of hard boarding and the facilities, but I was mainly a day student. I never went to boarding school. Okay. Ah, okay, excellent. Um, yeah. So, did you always want to become a law person, or did it just happen eventually? Uh, so my parents are lawyers, so I, I guess <laughs> at some point there was, uh, it's sort of like a family tradition. We have four lawyers in our, in just my immediate family alone. And then my extended family, I know there are a lot of lawyers, maybe we are like 10, 12, whatever. So it's, it's kind of like a family thing. Uh, so fair enough. I'm, I'm a lawyer today. Uh, so yeah, yeah, just putting a disclaimer, don't mess with your entire family because <laughs> they'll come <call> you. <laughs> well, you, you will try it. <laughs> I mean. Um, all right. So um you said you uh, I had thirty thousand artists. Uh, was that correct or was that my year? Like you no, were... three thousand. Oh three thousand. Yeah, so three thousand, yeah. So three thousand mostly from Africa. I okay. think a huge percentage of that is around 60, 65% from Africa, the remaining from the Middle East, from Europe, and also we have some, I think maybe like 1% or 2% from, from the United States, but mostly from Africa. So we have predominantly from Nigeria, we have from Kenya, we have Ghana, and then we have the Republic, we have Togo, we have from almost all West African countries, we have from South Africa, we are from Burundi, Malawi, Tanzania. So just federal across. Uh, so a lot of these artists use our uh, platform, music to sell their songs on stores like Spotify, 
Apple Music, Deezer, YouTube, Tidal, and the rest. So we are like the middle way, a gate point for them to access those stores and to collect reality. Okay, so if I'm an artist today, right, I have a song or whatever, how does your, first of all, like what exactly do you do with artists or for artists, right? And how does maybe like the first contact, I ima- imagine an, somebody, right, maybe someone that has been working by him, his or herself, right, an artist right now, like what exactly will you offer them and how exactly should they reach out to you for that service? Yeah, so uh, we offer quite a lot of features uh, from our app. So, but the major point is that we allow artists to sell their songs on streaming platforms like Apple Music, Deezer, Spotify, and the rest, and also collect royalties on their behalf because an artist cannot directly go to the stores like Apple Music and distribute. They need to come to an app or a platform like us, who is a distributor to distribute on their behalf. And we also collect royalties for them so they can view their royalties send their songs to stores from just a single dashboard. Uh, we also provide an advanced analytics feature. We provide a live reporting feature. We also provide uh, using artificial intelligence. We can actually predict the success of a particular song before it's actually being released. So we use a lot of data points and criteria so that to learn from your passing how did it perform, when did it perform, where where this streaming stands from and all to compute easily uh, and with a certain level of probability how how certain the song is going to, to, to succeed. Also, we use a lot of uh, APIs on Spotify and the rest to track the data, the song itself, and to see whether it's what it's currently trying. So take, for instance, we all know that as I can as I can is one living and as an example. So at Ake, for instance, this kind of song is trending. So you can pick data from that kind of song to determine if your own song will succeed, because that is what people are interested in at this point in time. Mm-hmm. So we rely on a lot of data points to, to do that. So which is one of the features that um, our artists uh, benefit. Uh, one, one of the reasons why they like our platform, it also allow them to split their realities among multiple uh, participants on the song. So you can have... Uh, uh, what's it called? You can have maybe the mixologist, the producer, the, the beat maker, and, and the rest. So you can split your reality among them. Also, we are piloting podcasts, for instance. So we allow creatives like you to also distribute their podcasts. So we are currently piloting that uh, with some few people and, and trying to do them that also. So it's really like an ecosystem for creatives around Africa and potentially from around the world. Since we have a lot of people from uh, from out of Africa come to using the apples. Oh, okay, that very very interesting. Um, a while ago we had worship. Worship is an Abuja based artist, right? Um, they are not as, uh, like I think when it comes to artistry, right? Obviously, you know the Lagos people, right? Um, but like the low key quote unquote artists, right, are also rising. And I'm just thinking when somebody like worship now um right so has some thousand followers um when you say you provide data points for him because the music is very interesting right especially especially for nigerian music um a lot of our music what really drives it is really the sound right so when you say you collect data points right is it the lyrics or is it the kind of sound that's going so for example if there's like i'm a piano you know that there was a point where when files released i'm a piano blah 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 that i'm a piano all of a sudden a lot of artists are using it is that the kind of things you advise them to do or is it like more okay you know these are the keywords for lyrics that you should use and focus on this or both uh yes yeah, so it's it's both actually but most predominantly the sound itself so because people from this part of the world they don't really care about <laughs> yeah, lyrics and saying the best song we've even seen instances where artists are switching genres and all. but uh most predominantly the sound and uh, so there's a way to study the sound and know oh this is what is trending because I, I gave an example of Ashake Ashake's music is trending now which is what a lot of people like Spotify knows that so we get that data points from Spotify and use it to predict whether the song we are sending can actually get succeed like as a or probably a level of probability. It might not be 90%, it might not be 70%, but 
But at least if your son is still out, maybe you get even 20%. So as a person, it's a good sign for you to even end up on some playlist and, and the rest. So there's really a lot of work at the background that has been done to ensure that that is possible. Anyways, but um, but lyrics also comes in a way, but mostly the sound. The API picks the sound mostly. The lyrics can come in between because the word the, the lyrics is not um, the API, for instance, is not that listens or fetches this data does not really speak to Nigerian tunes. So it's very hard most times to understand our songba, songbalaja, all those kind of things, you know. So you can you can mostly pick the sound, but not the lyrics, but the lyrics also works in between if you can understand it. So, so I'm just thinking, um, that it sounds it sounds like you work more with Afro beats or um you know uh, not necessarily. Oh not necessarily. Uh, I think uh, most of our users are actually Christian artists and gospel. Oh. That was it. I mean like a 30 percent. Oh. Uh, so we have a lot of uh big name uh gospel artists from Nigeria that use our platform and the uh, record is from Nigeria. So like 30 percent, I can say in fact, apart from the the foreign artists, so like a 30 percent the gospel, we have a lot of Afro beats also, maybe like another 20 percent or there about 30 percent or there about but mostly gospel Afro beats. Um then we have uh, some guys and like that's the popular gem. So we have like a chat in the office. But I know as of today, but there is a chat I check on the dashboard is is gospel. All right. Um so will you classify yourself, you know, especially like when it comes to being a middle party, you know, when you're talking about realities as a record label? Um, first of all, I'll ask that question before I'll ask the next time. Will you see you know, will you see this function as that? Uh, so we are not a record label. So we always try as much as possible to make that clear. We are not a record label. We are probably purely just a distribution and publishing company. So that's clearly stated. So we are not a record label for now. We don't want to be a record label. We are not one for now. So uh, we are just a distribution and a publishing company. So we also provide other ancillary services like licensing, because our focal point is just, just to ensure that giving an independent artist uh, a choice, an option to sell their songs out to, to stores. So we are not here for the And we don't provide a call label services. And we don't promise you what a call label We promise you. So, but what we do is we ensure we help you every step of the way. Because the record label will probably um, fund your, your music. We don't do that. We don't fund artists. We don't provide credit for at the moment anyway. So but that might change the time kind of picture, but we just have a straight parts right now. Okay, um, excellent. So um just to you know go more to your kind of like your second product, right? And especially you guys have a very big business focus, um, you know, which is in launching businesses, right? So I guess this is more CAC registration and documentation, you know, gathering documents kind of work, right? So can you just explain um, what you do with Revon, which is what I think you guys call it with your business? Yes, yeah, so Revon. Uh, so what we do with Revon basically is we, for now, we just operate in three countries, Nigeria, Ghana, and Kenya. So if you want to register a business uh, uh, from anywhere in the world, in those three countries, our app can help you with that. So in Nigeria, for instance, if you want to fast track registering your small business or your limited liability company in Nigeria easily, you can use Revon. If you want to do the same limited company in Ghana or in Kenya, you can also do the same. So most Nigerians don't have the opportunity to maybe register a business in Ghana, for instance. You can't do that. We have to maybe consult with like, Ghana before you can do that. But easily from the app, we can do all that. So, which is what Revon does. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking about like the, because I was talking to, I don't know if you know Get Equity. I was talking to um your founder, right? And basically, we we're having a conversation. And, you know, he was, he, he they just opened, a base right in eastern africa and kenya and he was talking and I, you know we went into the conversation of how it was just so difficult kind of to open 
to, to expand into African markets, right? And so how do you exactly help people register in Ghana, right? Because I guess you guys are a Nigerian company and, you know, in Kenya as well, as you stated, like, how do you do that? Do you, do you partner with um, people there? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so, so it's, more, it's more about partnership. Because, um, so there is, it's very hard for you to operate in multiple countries without actually having a contact person. Yeah, so what we basically do, we have partnership, contact, that makes the process very easy. So these people have uh, significant experience operating in, in the, that markets, just like the way we are understanding the Nigerian markets. They also understand Ghana markets, the Kenyan markets. So, yeah, so essentially that, that works. Oh, okay. Um, actually, I think that's, that's pretty clear then. Um, then your, I, th- I I was researching you guys. I think you guys had like, you started like as a law, I forgot the name you guys had before, but there was a name before Fisobi, or there was a form you had before Fisobi, which was like focused mainly on like um, legal work, right? Um, can you just speak on what you guys were before you became Fisobi as it is, or as it is like with the other services and with the other products? Uh, well, it has always been possible uh, since 2011, I believe. Uh, so, but law specifically the product that uh, that uh, I think was conceived 2012, but we started 2013. So, law specifically actually started out as a sort of platform or like some sort of blog for African, for Nigerian students, and also for lawyers to source for legal materials. Then we later discovered that for oh, a lot of people need these documents, they can't find it. Why not us build a law report? So midway we tried building a law report system, which did not work out well. And eventually we decided to pivot to building a system that allows people to draft legal documents. Uh, and then we we're able to do that using artificial intelligence. So you can draft legal documents, uh, just just to provide some basic details. So right now it's still working, although we are not fully really focused on that. Uh, that's processed more than 10,000 affidavits since 2017. A lot of people use it to prepare legal documents. Uh, but we're also trying to pivot the, the app to aim for just specifically for law firm, not generally for everyone, because it's currently free. So it's just free for anyone to go there and prepare documents. It's free of charge. So but we're trying to uh, to make it a paid version for law firms. So law firms, it's maybe few lawyers. And they prepare a lot of documents easily and just type out the name of, or you can just type out some question and then documents is prepared for you. So we did have using artificial intelligence to, to be able to get the best out of whatsoever you should be up. Yeah. Okay. Is, is, this sounds like a personal experience that made you to start writing this blog. Or <laughs> sounds like maybe you did like you were having difficulties as well, and then you just at the end of the day created. I like what led to you know the need to do this in the first place, like the blog aspect of the legal depository. Um, so the idea it was mainly an idea, uh, because we we're just listening to the aspect of people. So I told you what law procedure started out as. So it started out as uh, mostly giving people content. So a lot of people actually, more actually law students, they want uh, a sample draft for, for this, a sample draft for affidavit for this. So a lot of people were actually searching for that. And then people started sending us information as, oh, uh, I saw this draft, or I don't know how to prepare this document. Can you help me prepare this document? So we're getting a lot of, request like that we're like oh why not we just automate this process so easily you put in your information and the document is prepared for you which is not just a generic document a document that is personally for you which is different from many other documents that someone else will come and prepare with us so it was based on a lot of requests uh not specifically because i wanted to make my life easier i wish it was that way i stopped actively practicing or going to post things like uh, like five, six years ago. So just based on users request, people come in, sending us messages that, oh, please, or law students begging us that, oh, they have this test, they have this assignment, they don't know how to go about it. And all. So just uh, to automate it and then what that. 
Okay, um, I think I should have asked this question at the beginning, but like, it's a very interesting and fresh of it. Like, how do you guys come up? Like, how did you come with Dan? Come about with Daniel? Like, what's the story behind it? If there's one, uh, I get this question a lot. Uh, so basically, there's really no story about it. Uh, <laughs> to be very honest, uh, I think the name just appeared. Yes. So. Is it uh, a combination sure. of Fred and then Sibyl or like? I used to think so too. I used to think <laughs> so too. <laughs> I mean, when people started disturbing me, I had to tell them that. But to be very honest, that that is not true. So uh, a lot of people always try to tell me that no, it means something. I should tell them that maybe it's from Fred. Meanwhile, it's not from Fred actually. So, but the name just I don't know just appeared from from nowhere and then here we are today. <laughs> interesting um okay so just uh, interesting this is the first time because a lot of people only have um okay so i want you you spoke on how like how you know you are very like the oyetolas right <laughs> if you come mess with them legally speaking right i want to know how um maybe when you had challenges right um especially because you started out league and you know with the um legal depository like how maybe family helped you overcome some of those challenges especially because you said you drafted about 20 20 20 000, oh what was the amount you said affidavit yeah, right? yeah that's an insane amount right so yeah <laughs> was there help there oh, look back at it uh, so well, when I was in when I was in uni, used to get a lot of questions, a lot of test assignments and stuff. So most times I used to either ask my dad or my mom for them to, to push me through if they are busy. If they are free, yes, they push me through. But if they are busy, they can just refer me to probably any of their uh, junior staff at work to just help me out. So, uh, but mostly. Mostly not really a lot, so. Okay. Um, and I want to like just ask on because you guys are doing different services, like the music alone can be somebody you want can be somebody's business entirely, right? Or, <laughs> or even the law deposition can be somebody's entire business, right? How are you managing such a diverse right ecosystem, right? And how do you kind of maintain your team? to be focused to um the vision and what exactly is the vision for fresh will be uh well so our vision is to become one of the largest technology companies in the world uh so we our goals start of party was project because we can most times we look back uh and see what we've been able to achieve over the years considering the fact that the company started when uh, just from our dorm room when we were university students and the fact that we've been able to go over the years to achieve what we've been able to achieve. Uh, so that really pushes us because the fact that we're able to achieve this, that means we can do better than this. And also because we want to be like the Amazon of the world one day. Uh, we don't want Nigeria to be like a stopping point for us. We want to be big. That's the same way Amazon, the Apple of today, they are bigger than America. They have their territories and expanded beyond even the shores of their continent. They are virtually in every country in the world. So we believe we have the same dream, we have the same vision. We want to be uh, a tier one technology company around the world. The same way we have the fund. We can maybe have, maybe we place a fund like this. Uh, our own too. So in a way, we just want to build a better company, a better world, something to be part of a multi-generational company. So it's very, most times it looks impossible. On some days you feel like, oh, are we actually going in the right direction? On some other days you'll be like, oh, this is the right path. Uh, but we thank God, uh, we are not being distracted by the state of the nation. Uh, sometimes it can be depressing, everything that's going on around insecurity, the inflation rate, the scarcity, lack of talent, so there are, there are talent, but talent also wants to work for bigger companies and all. So there are a lot of things going on the challenges, but uh we we believe we can we can do it and God willing we should do it, yeah. 
Okay, uh, interesting. No, I just want to, since you brought about the topic, okay, yeah, the team as well. Um, the question on the team. Basically, like, how you are able to manage, like, such a, diver, like, I don't know, <laughs> this ecosystem, like, it's mad. Uh, well, management of the team is not, it's not a single man job. It's not just only me. Right now, we are spread across three continents. Uh, so we have people in Canada, Africa in the United Kingdom, then we have uh, people in Nigeria. So we will also mostly work remote. But then thought for tools, technology tools, uh, we are able to easily connect no matter where we are. You can work remotely, you can work, and I know where you are working on. And then we have close communication tools that help us achieve whatever we want to achieve. Yes, so it's not an easy job, but uh, technology has made it easier for us. And when you have understanding team members, it makes the work easier also. People are ready to do the work and they are understanding and uh, they are putting in the efforts into the work and they also want to learn, they want to become better. The kids is the vision of the company. Yeah, so it will, one way or the other, to work out. There will be challenges, definitely, but one way or the other with uh, enough tenacity and perseverance to work out. Okay. Um, now I want to talk, you know, on probably the Nigerian factor. Basically, first of all, in managing businesses and in having businesses, you are doing maybe uh, you know, three things that, legally speaking, right, might require different procedures um to follow so you have to comply with different kind of rules for different things in music you have to comply you know um, with the rules set around music right with registering business the same right and with um giving advice or even doing affidavits for people what has been the greatest challenge so far for you as regards i mean one is already hard but as regards these three right um what has been the biggest challenge um in in, in processing and in being and being able to work this ecosystem in a you know in a Nigeria that is just very interesting. Uh, I don't I don't want to start listing uh, <laughs> out all the Nigerian <laughs> problems. <laughs> With me and you, we know <laughs> we know the problems. We know. Um, in fact, I know everybody listening. They are Nigerians or Nigerians out of the country. We all know the problem. Uh, associated with living in this country, talkless of operating a business is, is crazy. It used to be crazy, but now it's even crazier. Look, they are, they are so they are uncountable things. I can't start mentioning them because as I'm, as I'm talking to you now, right now, I'm just thinking, I'm just trying to think of why does this even exist? I've participated in different accelerator programs. I've spoken to a lot of people out of the country. We have people out of the country that are working out of the country also. So when when sometimes when I explain challenges, I was having a meeting with uh, with someone from Facebook like like two weeks ago, two weeks ago. So um, I was having that meeting. I had my I was so just a video call like this. And it took me light. <laughs> <laughs> and everywhere was just everywhere was just imagine you your video is on my own side was just black. The guy was like, oh, what's going on there? <laughs> His the reaction, the reaction was like, what's going on there? I had to remind him that I was still on the call because he thought I had disappeared or, or I was on the call or something. I was like, I'm still here. <laughs> is he an Oribo person? Yes, yes. Oh, God. But it was one because he thought I was in London then mm. so but i was in nigeria i thought i was in london so i was like what's going on and i said uh it's raining every year so but it's not raining because he was in london too so it was all <laughs> raining in his own side. i was like no 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 i'm i'm back in nigeria I was like oh 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 okay the boy was going on i told him that the flag went off and then i had to just already connect the the my ring lights to the power bank thank god i had a power bank close back so i just connected it before i could come on but so the recorded call, so it was disrupted for like a minute or two, but can imagine that. So, but that's just, by the way, that's just one. There are several other challenges from, from operating the office. I was, I was discussing with my sister like uh, two hours ago, and I was telling her that this particular month alone, back at our office, we don't have lights. 
for like cumulatively, you know, had electricity like uh, from the from the bridge for cumulatively for seven hours. She was like, what? That's in seven hours. In I'm talking about seven hours for the entire July. It sounds like a joke, but no lights. So there are so many challenges. Right. From, you had seven hours. Government. Like seven hours of light in the entire July. Yes. Yes, for the entire July, seven hours of grid. So we've had to rely heavily on generator. We've had to rely and not even relying on, on you know, when when people talk about, oh, uh, you don't have generator. Generator, we have generator. We have inverters in the office. It's so bad that the inverters are now even so bad that they hardly work up to one hour anymore. Generator, you need to service. We are using generator for that long. You need to service it at least twice. So you need to service the generator. If they are servicing the generator, that means you won't have lights. You have to rely on the inverter. Inverter goes up under one hour. There are so many challenges. That's just electricity alone. There are so many challenges. Imagine operating as a business. So you need to factor in all that into your cost every month, which someone probably in another country, like being a republic, might not even be a problem for. You understand? You need to factor all that alone. We talk about there are so many challenges. I just can't start listing, but the most frustrating one definitely is electricity because at this point in our lives or at this point as a nation, it should not be a challenge for whatsoever reason. No matter how rich you are, you still have to you still have to fight it in this country. Even if you are outsourcing your electricity, I have friends that say, but nevertheless. Because there's this scarcity now, they're having to pay extra or they are rationing the electricity to like change in the day. So that's even for people at sourcing. So talk about of we that we are our own, you know, electricity distributor. So <laughs> it's uh it's ridiculous, but uh as a, I don't know if you are calling in for me, if you are you are in Nigeria right now, but is is um is is ridiculous, is um mm-hmm. is what it is. Generally, as a as a nation, as a as a country, but well, that's part of the work we just have to do. We have to persevere. We have to strive harder to, despite all the challenges, to surmount them. And hopefully, one day, we are all being hopeful that uh, the country will change and it will become easier for businesses to survive. Because I can't just imagine the number of companies or the number of startups. That must have fallen apart just because of electricity alone. Talkless of talents, that's recruitment, uh, love. Even that one is another story for another day. Love. Nigerians don't want to work for Nigerian companies anymore. They want to work for companies that pay them in dollars, which is absolutely right. I don't say anything wrong in that because you need to just suppose how much you're earning to how much you're actually spending. So because you look at the inflation rates in the country, the inflation rates I was looking at it because I studied the data. I think it's ten percent for the month of June. You don't know how many percent it's going to be for the month of July. I'm sure my enter will be another nineteen percent. So imagine someone earning a specific salary. I'm trying to to dollar now is I think around seven fifty. We as a technology company, we know how much we are spending. Our service business is we send out an invoice to clients now in Naya, and the client does not pay that same day or probably worst case scenario the next day. We are going to suffer. The consequences because if you take out the quotes, let's say we are, you, let's even come down to a domain name. Mm-hmm. For instance, you are buying a domain name for ten dollars, or let's say eleven dollars. Let's say ten dollars. You are buying a domain name for ten dollars, and you send the exact amount to a client that oh, dollar today is six hundred naira, and then the client decides that oh, I'm not going to pay you until two weeks after, and dollar is now seven fifty. That means you are paying seven thousand five hundred naira. Uh, for a domain and you collected six thousand from from the clients that is a loss on your own end except the client decides to reimburse you or, or add some extra money to it so you can imagine the consequences of that for technology companies uh is, is devastating the, the fact that the currency exchange rate is not predictable i don't know how much it's going to be tomorrow whether it's going to go higher or probably going to go lower and we will try to quote in dollars for clients, clients are going to be like, oh, I can't pay you, I don't have dollars, so if now I can pay you. Even if they decide to pay you in dollars, you can't accept you, you find a way out to get a domiciliary card. There is no, we don't have, uh, we don't even have uh, the opportunity of using store companies like uh, Bata, like Flutterweave, or all these other 
the missionary camps anymore. So yeah, there are a lot of challenges. Don't let me don't let me just go into it because we start talking about it. That can just be the chapter for this podcast. Again, challenges <laughs> operating a, a business in, in Nigeria is uh well we shall overcome. We shall overcome. <laughs> just, uh, the um I don't know that last statement just signifies the Nigerian in you. Right. It's just amazing how um problem after problem is like the the conditions want to test <laughs> your bandwidth, right? It, it's suffering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous to say the least. Because we are not meant to normally we are not meant to be going through this. So imagine you are a business operating in let's say London, for instance. You don't have there are some things that by default they are not your problem, which will make you think better and which will make you even see the problems and build around such problems. But by the time you have to think about electricity, you have to think about the exchange rate, you have to think about recruitment, talent, you have to think about uh, the economy at, at, as a whole, the fact that people are not willing to, to spend like before. So by the part I have to think about all those issues alone, affects your thinking by default. So you won't be able to think better, you won't be able to see some problems to solve. Rather, you will be thinking about solving your needs because it's only with the light I can, I can think of building a startup. So, so it's just crazy. We're in London, probably what you're thinking about is uh, uh, commuting and getting to your, to your office. Internet is not your problem. Electricity is not your problem. Yeah. You don't have to worry about buying a new generator every nine months or every year. So there's, there, are, there are a lot of things that you don't need to worry about. There, there was a particular YouTube channel, the, the, the particular YouTube video I was doing like two weeks ago about the founder who was operating in Nigeria before and then she relocated to, to London and she was just talking about her experiences, uh, about what she had to cater for, every, uh, what she, she was bothered for every single day of her life while she was in Nigeria. So it just is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And there is no, I don't know. It's just a, we shall overcome. <laughs> That's the word. Um, okay, let's switch it up a bit. I think um, greatest innovations come from places with the greatest problems, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I s- spoke with Isaac. Um, I don't know if you know Isaac. She is a digital marketer. She's um, <clears throat> she's in charge of ZDA Africa, right? And I told her about, you know, yeah, some, yeah uh, Facebook statistics, you know, like YouTube statistics, just the marketing statistics concerning Nigeria as a demography, right? Um, with these big tech companies. Um, and I spoke about challenges, right? And she translated it immediately to opportunities. For first OP, right? Because you guys look, you know, you, want, you first of all, you say you want to be the biggest tech company, tier one, um, right? How, how at the same time um, that you're so frustrated and annoyed and trying to work out, right? Do you think, um, you know, your company and maybe even founders, right, can go deeper in this level, right, and try to create something innovative around the challenges here? Uh, so what we try, always try to do is uh, try to build around systems that we understand and that we have passion about that uh, we know we because before building the startup or before building any product once in all this challenge as possible to do this do i really understand this if i don't but i have the passion for it let me do a lot of research around it and if after doing the research i still don't understand it I approach someone can you take me through this even after taking me through this, I still don't understand. I abandon it. I don't go to, I don't try as much as possible to invent a wheel when I don't even know that there's a wheel in the first mm-hmm. place. So mm-hmm. if you look at the Nigerian system, the way it has been structured or the way it has been built, yes, I've thought about it that oh, can we create something revolutionary to, 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 to uh, around probably a problem that everyone is facing 
wait or we are going to try to do the same thing. Yeah, I, I've actually talked about it to, to build something around that, but everything still revolves around the aerospace that I that I learned. So we talk about the first world revolution, the second, the third, and then the fourth. Right now, most advanced countries, they are in the fourth now. So when you look at the fourth, that's when we talk about the Internet of Things, we talk about artificial intelligence, we talk about um, uh, what's it called, machine learning, and the rest. So that's the fourth industrial revolution around the world. The first, I think the first was mechanization, the second was electricity, I think the third was internet. So if you look at Nigeria, where do you think Nigeria is among those four? So one thing must give way for one. That is just the truth. Don't let anybody bullshit you. One thing more, you can't jump from first to fourth. Do you understand? You can't from today decide that, oh, we are going to leave mechanization and jump to artificial intelligence. Because one thing is dependent on each other. The internet of things, which is the fourth, is dependent on the internet, which is the third. The third is dependent on electricity. One cannot, you can't have an internet without electricity. Do you understand? And after the fourth, I don't know probably what will be the fifth, but whatever is going to be the fifth, will be the third. we are still battling with the second, which is electricity. So you can't build on the third when the fourth is still like, when the, when the second is still like a challenge. So if you want to, to be innovative or you want to build something, you have to build something on the second. Do you understand? You have to just look at one, two, three, four. When the when you are still struggling with the second, which is electricity, before moving to the third, uh, internet, reliable internet, then move to the third, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things. There was a time uh, because I have love for uh, smart uh, Internet of Things, uh, smart connectors, smart homes, smart this, smart that. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to build that. Yeah, to, yeah. I had Amazon Alexa even to date. I have, I have my everything is electric. I can talk to my Amazon, my Alexa that oh turn on the lights, turn off the TV. It does that. But if there's no light, it cannot work. Yes, <laughs> all those, all those things. So we need to fix one before. I, I was trying to do four when I do not have electricity. Without electricity, I can't be telling Alexa, turn on my, turn on my lights when, or turn on the TV when there's no light. So it's really, we have to fix one before the other. So we need like a, a decisive government to come in and, uh, and decide that, oh, this is our focal point. Let us try and get electricity for for everyone stable internet for everyone and then they can decide to build on that because if you look at all the companies today all the big startups in nigeria today they are all built on the internet from your flutter wave to your cobalt city which are like the top tiers the biggest tech companies in nigeria all of them they are built on the internet which is where the world is right now which is the future so the government has to come in. I know they are trying. I, I saw that they passed the new bill that allows for states to generate the electricity. Hopefully, some states can maximize that. So that, let's say, take for instance, maybe like an option state or an equity state decide that, oh, let us bring in investors to, to ensure that we have uninterrupted electricity in this particular location alone. You see a lot of people flock in there, tech companies are flock in there. And that they will build on that. They understand, but the people you are even building for, they don't even have internet, they don't have electricity, which is another challenge, is a problem. Because you want to build for them. Let's say you want to start an internet of things company. Who are you building for? Definitely you are building for maybe like a small, minute percent, percentage of people who can actually afford Not for everyone. So this also, but uh, those are realities. You have to, when you're building businesses in Nigeria, you don't can't be pessimistic, definitely, but you have to also build on realities. You have to look at the regulatory framework. Uh, you, you all know what is going on with flutterwave and cheaper, cheaper cash that you can right now. Uh, 
you need to understand the regulatory ecosystem also. You need to understand the government. So you can't just build blindly and expect that uh, these people won't take your business away from you or the source of, of living. But, well, like I said, we see we have to overcome. We have to build it in a way, one way or the other. We need to find a solution. Whether we all need to come together as one or we keep building in silence. But one, one thing or the other, we, we fix it. Mm. I, I just want to speak in relation to what you said. So, I mean, um, even, you know, Obasa and Job, you know, the big craze with GSM, right, in Nigeria. But even before that, let's go back to when he first came to Africa, right, with Mo Ibrahim, with Celta. Mm, I was reading the story, um, and, you know, the prosperity paradox in the book, right, it explains basically what he did, right, and the challenges he faced. And basically, you know, Mo Ibrahim was in a situation of, okay, I want to make people have phone calls like they should talk because he found out that you know people to communicate maybe with their villages right people have to work like maybe five sometimes take two days the journey or like you know 10 hours just to get from point to point to communicate a message with the family member or whatever right so he saw that as an opportunity and Mo Ibrahim right obviously he did not have the money and so he went to investors and of course investors are like you know you're mad <laughs> how do you want to create GSM in Africa right? yeah, like, yeah. there was no road um, you know, there was no cables, like there was nothing that showed that GSM could exist per se, right? Um, so I mean, eventually, right, he got some people that gave him money, right? And like for thinking about the story, right? especially like related to what you have said, you know, that the point that you know you can't jump revolutions, right? Like it's it's closely stacked against each other, and except you have the rich right, right? I mean, you can't really make them fall. And I, I, what, as you were talking, what came to my mind was the point where by Mo Ibrahim, because how do you want people to recharge? It's not like they have credit cards, you know, there was nothing, right? So, I mean, the whole concept of recharge card came about because, okay, people can have a scratch card whereby they can get a number and then that number will give them credits, right? So, do you think when it comes to innovation um, in Africa, I don't know if I would say doomed, <laughs> or do you think like our fate, right, is that, Honestly speaking, if you want to build in Africa, you have to create the path for yourself, right? Do you think that is the reality we have to come, you know, we have to sit down with and just tell ourselves, like not expect miracles. I say the miracle you're expecting is yourself and you have to build. If you don't have, if you don't have light, you build the generator. If there's no road, you, you do the road. Like, do you yeah. think that is the best way to go about building <laughs> now um right and like how will you tell somebody to mentally prepare themselves for this kind of parts uh well so there's this particular saying that uh when life gives you lemon i think you you, you make a lemonade <laughs> out of I see we get fish but, give me lemonade now uh, <laughs> uh -huh. but in nigeria we don't have lemon <laughs> we don't even have the cup to prepare the lemonade <laughs> i mean <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have an idea of what a lemonade is meant to be. <laughs> so you get. Yeah. So even if you see the lemon, you take the lemon like that. So it's so maybe I don't know. Uh when I look at uh Mo Mo Ibrahim's story and also talking about the book Prosperity Paradox. Prosperity Paradox, when I read it, actually opened my eye to a lot of things, most especially when you think you are innovating and or when you think you are solving a problem, when you think what you are going to do is going to solve a problem, but meanwhile, you're creating more problems yeah. out of it. But what Mo, Mo did, uh, although I've read quite a lot into how, uh, how the business came about, most especially bringing in governments like the State government, and, and I believe Lagos State governments in Nigeria. The whole story behind that is a story for another day, which I'm not going to go into. But when you look at how they were able to build and uh, they started small, which is what I advise everyone to also do, you start small and then from there you study the market more and then build in that direction. If you look at how even telecommunication companies are surviving today now, you know that 99% of all the towers, I know IHS manages all the towers in Nigeria now, but 99% of all the towers in Nigeria, they operate on digital. 
on diesel. The, all operates, yes. 99 can one confirm it from any source, every, any source. 99 percent of them operate on diesel. Wow. So, all those towers that you still see in Zanfara states, they yeah. are not connected to any grids. Wow. Maybe they have some sort of backup solar panels, backup solar. Note that backup solar, they don't they don't rely on solar as a major form of technology. It's still diesel. They have the generator there, they have someone security that has to stay with the towers is that crazy in this part of the world so someone has to be they employ maybe one or two people taking shifts to ensure that the tower is secure then they have a contract to turn going to supply diesel there just to ensure that people are actually connected at the end of the day to internet and also to to phone calls so it's not as if they've just been able to find a way around it it's not as if i don't know how profitable it is but definitely they are finding their way around. But that's part of the reason why data and all these things are expensive also anyway. But they've been able to find a way around it and the system that currently works, which uh, has also enabled several other businesses. Because if not for what they did, if not for them coming into the country and defying all odds, there won't be a flutter wave. There won't even be probably a festival because I, I was connected to the internet. I had internet in my house for, I think, since the year 2002 or, or thereabouts. So even for all those, a lot of people won't have access to what they're able to do now at the moment, which is a lot of sacrifice they've been able to make. It might be painful. They might not have made enough money like they so that they're going to make and the rest. But when you're coming, when you're trying to build a business, these are some of the things you should have at the back of your mind. That you are not just doing it alone for yourself. You are probably trying to build for the next generation. They built for the next generation. They are the backbone of almost all the tech companies in Nigeria today. I don't know any founder that probably grew up in Nigeria that had access to, to internet was not dependent on that. Even going to, except you are going to all these summer cafes, what is it? Add broadband or dialing cable into your house. Definitely is based on the technology that they've built over the years. So companies are also enabling other companies. So when you are building also, or when you are starting a business, just have it at the back of your mind that you don't know uh, the next company you are enabling. So take for instance, first music is uh, flutter with powers, our powers are payments for the whole Africa and for the, for the whole world. Because we can collect $2, dollars can collect... Yeah. That's, that's how people are able to pay us from Tanzania for as much as other countries because of that. So uh, we are built on their own technology too because of what they've been able to do. We don't know what someone else can come and build on our own. So if you're a business person trying to start up in Nigeria, just have it at the back of your mind that there will be challenges, but you just have to find a way to overcome them. If there, there's no business that won't have challenges except you are not breaking things. So, uh, but well, Tenacity, perseverance, yeah. these are like the keywords I just have to have at the back of the mind. Just have to persevere the, the challenges and just ensure the company survives at the end of the day. I'm afraid that's been an interesting conversation. Um, now, after we have kind of dissected and gotten angry about the nation, <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, like, what you should. <laughs> What is your Nigeria dream? Um, yours personally, right? And then what is the dream for your country? For your country? Uh, Nigerian dream. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why the question is very funny is because it's just very funny. Uh, it's just too funny. <laughs> because <laughs> even... The president does not have Nigerian dream, so I don't know. <laughs> but, like jokes apart, jokes apart. When growing up, we used to hear Vision Twenty Twenty, Vision Twenty Ten. Like those were like the yeah. mantras from the Obasanjo from Joe, yeah, yeah, do I? They were like Twenty Ten. This is what we want to achieve. I've not heard this government say, "Oh, <laughs> in Twenty Twenty Five or in Twenty Thirty, this is what we want to achieve." What is really the goal? I don't know. I'm serious. Even from people like I don't want to start mentioning it. 
I've not heard it like say that, oh, you know, you know all these advanced countries, they'll be like, oh, vision 2025, or want to reduce low emission rates, uh, reduce fossil fuels, want to target uh, electric vehicles. You keep hearing things like that, but in Nigeria, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know whether our vision is to have electricity in 2025. I don't, I'm not sure they know. So, <laughs> Nigerian dream, I can't answer that question. <laughs> to be very honest with you, because I need to align myself definitely with our leader's vision. We need to know where they see the country. So, it's where they see the country that will determine, oh, are these people actually thinking in the right direction? But definitely, Nigerian dream is just to, to, just to have a country and develop as all these Western European countries. Yeah. So that really is just the dream. Mm. Yeah. Just to, that, that really is, I don't know, but that should be the dream to have stable internet, to have stable electricity, to just have the, the basic survivor, uh, to have to just have basic amenities to survive. A lot of people are suffering in the streets. It's very sad when you see it. We all try our best to ensure that we do one or two things, but a lot of people are actually suffering. What What is the plan of the government for them? They don't, most people don't, they don't, the governments, they are blinded because they don't even know that people are suffering. But trust me, a lot of people are suffering. A lot of people survive on less than. The dollar now, you know, when they say uh, dollar a day, uh, the dollar is now 750. So, yeah. yeah, so you look at the, the minimum wage, minimum wage is not even up to, is it up to 30, is it up to 30 dollars or 50? Let's say 50 dollars and the rest. So we need to, I don't know, just have to solve our problems. I think that should be the immediate goal to solve the basic problems. Ensure that people have food, they have jobs, electricity, the security, which is the big deal now. Uh, what happened in Abuja yesterday, what is happening every day around the country. So I believe that should be the dream to, to see a same society, to see a same society where, where justice is actually justice, not that, um, not that it's not justice. So, yeah, that's it. Maybe this question is better suited for 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 the Nigerian president or one of the people <laughs> running for the for our office. But I want them to answer that question so I can know what to also say because I I can just say it, but it doesn't have any effects to be honest. Because day to they don't know. Can I, I, I'm very serious. They don't know. They don't have a vision for this country. People say the country is on vibes. On vibes is this something. <laughs> I just want to know. They don't know. It's just, I feel, I feel, in, I, I won't, I will tell you the truth. I, to be very honest, I feel it's just a freestyle. Like, you know how artists go into the studio. They don't have anything in the back of their mind, but they get there and they say something. That's the way I see the Nigerian government. They go there and then they just, they just try their luck, whether it will work or it won't work. Do you get They just go there and be like, oh, let me campaign and popular. Uh, once I become elected, maybe as an House of Rep member or governor or president, let me just do it. There's really no plan, no, no structured plan. I, I don't, I don't see it. Maybe I don't see it. Maybe you've seen it, but there's really no structured yeah. plan. You've seen that. I'm an option. I'm an option. We have a post on our option, right? It's called the history of development developmental plans in, in Nigeria. Um, <clears throat> I'll just shoot you the link later. But yes, yeah, I mean, in this administration, we have seen like two, basically two quote unquote plans, right? I mean, in 2017, there was the economic recovery and growth plan. That was to last to 2020, and then 2021, they released another, which is the medium term national development plan. But of course, you know, all these things, I will argue, sir, if you read Nigeria's development plan, right? Um, but, but if you, yeah, I'm aware, of, I'm aware of those plans, but to be honest, if you look at those plans, were they realistic in the first place? Let's say they were realistic. Where did they achieve those plans before moving to the next plan? Then, when even people, people are, 
Let's go there. 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 Because when you look at the plan, can compare with where where you started from. Do you understand? Are mm -hmm. people enjoying life better than the way when you even started the plan? So you have a plan from 2017 to 2020, which is five years. So at the end of the 2020, you bring the results. Are people benefiting more? Are people having fun? Can people travel? To me, my, my goal, let me say, okay, in Nigerian dream, one of my dreams has been to travel to all the 36 states in the country. I'm not sure that's it. <laughs> the next foreseeable future, I'm not sure it's possible. Yeah. That's being honest. I'm not sure it's something I want to do, except mm. maybe I have some, some uh, handsome money <laughs> that I don't know about. Because if I have that handsome money, I would better use it to invest in a startup than to take that kind of trip. You get so it's crazy. The crazy world out there. The crazy world out there. Too. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was listening to, I think, you know, find, like Arise, um, the morning show, right? And basically, today, the Kaduna State Governor, right, Erifai, came out and said he spoke to Buhari about the threats made to kidnapping. And Buhari did not know that there was a threat to his life, right? Um, I mean, so, like... <laughs> Obviously, this is a refined talker, so we don't know how true it is because you know the president receives a lot of briefings. Um, as Ruben Abati said on that show, but then it, it still boils down to what you said, right? It's like, how can I, how do Nigerians have a dream if the government does not even have the dream, right? So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's even uh, well, I have every reason to believe that that is true, anyways, because if you. <laughs> It's not true. I, I don't think you come out to say that. Oh, in the first person to inform the government, the, the president that someone wants to, I want to kidnap the pre sitting president. In foreign countries, you just need to tweet or they'll carry you. How can you come out and say you want to kidnap? <laughs> when it's not a, <laughs> it's not another person. A number one citizen wants to go and kidnap and he too does not know that there are security threats. And it's not a sitting governor that went to traveled all the way to inform him that someone wants to kidnap him. I mean, there is no, I don't know. That's the kind of joke that uh, basket mouse should crack and everybody will laugh. To be honest, <laughs> it's it's too ridiculous. To hear. It's too. And these are the kind of things that you keep hearing instead of hearing the Nigerian dream. Yes. These are the kind of things that makes the news. Not that uh, by twenty twenty five, uh, hundred uh, million people will be connected to the national grid, or we have fifty thousand megawatts or something. That's the kind of thing that should be making the line. But no. Is that they want to kidnap a sitting president? I mean, it's Bobby that should have made that statement, not Hero Five, to be honest. Not Hero Five. It's very unfortunate. And I do hope, right, especially like for, for next year at least, uh, that whoever the leader, <clears throat> you know, whoever emerges as leader of Nigeria, considers all the problems that the nation is going through because you know i i think the nation is you know when when your phone is on five percent as like low power mode or something i was like i think nigeria is on five percent low power mode and um I, people tend to overestimate in my opinion the ability for nigeria to because we ourselves, you know, Nigerians themselves, you know, are very, you know, we can sustain a lot of problem suffering, right? Like as, as we stated, the bandwidth we can endure, right? But I'm just thinking, nationally speaking, right? Can can it happen? And you know, just to connect, I think what I always tell people is that in a divided Nigeria is not a solution, right? I mean, we might say it is in one way or the other, but the the thing is. Using the case study of South Sudan, Seth, right? Um, the problems that tend to exist in nations before successions, right, replicate themselves in succeeded nations, right? So, I mean, whatever it is that you think you fought for, 
um, receive that, you know, you still fight for it because a part of that seceded land will now come and say, ah, we're not part of it again, right? So it now balls, you now go through this loop of, okay, where does it stop, right? And I mean, the extreme end is to now say every individual has his own land or country, right? So my house is my country. And so you need maybe visa to pass across my street or all of that, right? I mean, that is extreme. Um, but the point is, right, we really need to, we need to understand that you know there are so many critical things that must be addressed um that it is not a joke 200 million people 200 million, like we can talk japa all we want but you know even people that japa at the end of the day their family is there and their mind is not as you know in, you can japa but your family you still have to send money you still have to do one thing or another right so family is there so you're always connected in one way or the other and you know your japa in sense is just a physical um thing not a mental thing because you'll never be really free of it right and whatever problems happens to these 200 million people in nigeria um it will somehow affect you um and yeah so uh, i don't know 2023 i hope i hope as citizens we understand the power that we have um you know with with votes and we do not make a mistake right um with that option Yes, uh, I think I, I very much agree with what you said. Uh, uh, a divided country, for the for the most part, is not the benefit. So it won't work well for a lot of people because it, the, the way I see it, because most of the children and most of these people are just teaching for oh, you we know, should go their separate ways, the south should go their separate ways. If you look. Into some states, there are some states that they don't even intermarry. There are some, there are some tribes within the state that you can't, they don't intermarry. So if it boils down to that, they they want to go their separate ways. We now say, oh, in Lagos states, you should create Lagos island country and <laughs> Lagos mainland country because it doesn't make sense. Even some families they fight. So I just believe it still boils down to that and grinding. If we all have a vision. If you all have a vision and everyone is working towards that vision, that particular goal, I believe we cannot be united. See how big the United States is. Come on, look at Texas. Look at uh, people from California. They are, they are different people. You look at the Texas Cowboys. They are different from people that stay in Los Angeles and, mm -hmm. and stay in Berkeley and, and the rest. They are different sets of people. Look at people in New York. Look at even people in Hawaii and, and, and the rest. There are different sets of people, but nevertheless, they've managed to come together as one because they have a singular goal to become the best in the world, the mm -hmm. largest economy in the world, because, because they know there's power in that unity. Because by the time you divide the country now, uh, some people we have, they, they, you can't, that means we are powerless. The reason why a lot of countries respect us right now is because we are one. We are a lot. We have this power if you decide to come together. You, you see the way when we come together to attack people on Twitter, you see that kind of <laughs> energy, that kind of, that kind of unity. So imagine we channel that positively. You can imagine what the country we, are, we achieve. But the leaders have succeeded in, in creating this sort of agitation and a lot of people have been being led into, into believing that a particular region is better than a particular region. Meanwhile, it's just all from, from, the, from bad leadership. Several years ago, if you look at the granite pyramids from the north before even the oil wells came in. Let's say that, oh, it was back then that the northern people were now saying that, oh, the north, they don't have anything. No. Let us separate from them. How would the south feel now? But people don't think about that. They don't think about it in a structured way. And it's even the, the, the educated people that, that are to be blamed the most, to be honest. They've created more, more, too much definity amongst people all around the world. It's, I'm, I'm all around Nigeria. It's, it's disheartening to hear. I believe Nigeria should be one. Uh, we should all be united to achieve a common goal because our power, our respect is in our unity. So if, if the country is dissolved today, uh, I'm not sure any country will respect us because look at South Sudan. Look at, if you look at them now, who, who cares about them? Mm -hmm. What have they achieved 
since they, they decided to do their separate ways. Just look at it. What have they actually achieved since they decided to do their separate ways? Have they become the, the best in the world or the best in Africa? And who even knows them? I'm sure you count like 20 African countries before you think of them. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so if, but if Nigeria wants to go that path, good luck. But personally, I don't believe that is the right path. <laughs> I don't even believe we should just find a common goal. Let us know where we are going. Uh, maybe with some bit of structuring at the state level, not even regional. Because when you look at region again, look at, let's say, take for instance, this, this, the Southwest, you score that people from Ijebu people or Mustafa people, don't marry people from Ikiti. So, and they're all Yoruba people. Mm-hmm. So, just boils down to, 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 we Africans, we sometimes we do our own things that uh, just very weird. But, uh, well, we should just have a common goal. Let's just all know where we are going. In 2050, uh, we should not be suffering like this. We should have stable electricity in the next five years. So that goal we are six. When everyone knows that this is where we are going to, they won't think about that will be the last thing in their mind. So, yeah. Well, they don't, we don't know where they are going to now. They say we ask for words in general, I don't know it. So we don't, we all don't know where they are going to. We just vibes and the initial. So it's all good. All right. Um, as we begin to wrap up, just the final question. Do you think, um, you know, the next generation, I'm talking millennials, Gen Z, um, I think it's alpha generation now. Do you have hope in them? Right, um, especially as regards Nigeria. <laughs> do you think it's vibes too, or like they are, or do you think they are different in fabric? Um, right, because some of these majority of them, self, right, if you put them in categorically, right, uh, post so they are really children of the fourth republic. That is to say, you know, they have never actually been under a dictatorship, so all they know in quote is a democracy. We can question the effectiveness, right? But you know, compared to maybe some millennials have you know, all millennials have lived through the dictatorship, even if it's one or two, right? Um, the older generation tends to have like a they don't talk a lot, right? Because they have experienced things, right? So, in, in this regard, do you think? The new generation is a different fabric that might create something different for Nigeria, or do you think at the end of the day, the influence of the older generation will influence the younger generations and we'll just see the same thing replicating all over again? Well, uh, I think I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of hope in the generation after my age, I guess, that's from uh, people from this current sports republic. I don't have a lot of hope. The major reason why I'm saying that is when you look at that NSAS, if you look at the major proponents of the NSAS, more especially people that were able to drive the reading into at least achieving maybe a small goal at the end of the day, they're mostly younger people, very young people, people like when they are 19, they're 20, they're 20, 24, so in the second birthday or just around the corner or thereabouts. So I really believe those set of people, they, they, they have the will because they've seen, they are more exposed than the old, that generation. They know what the world entails. They know what their mates are getting. They are on TikTok, they are on Snapchat, they see how people are doing something. You see, in fact, you see how they operate. The kind of lifestyle they live with the dress. So it's kind of like very different. They are extremely exposed. So, and you know, knowledge is power. It's, knowledge is simply power. The more you know, the more powerful you become. Compared to our, to our parents' generation, or probably let me say people that are close to 30 now, our own generation. And you see the way probably people uh, started using the internet maybe when they were just 16 or 17. But these people, they started using iPhones since probably when they were like 9, 10, 11 years old. They've had access to Android, they've had access to Facebook, Instagram accounts, TikTok, TikTok, mm-hmm. I mean, TikTok accounts. They see how people are doing things from other parts of the world on TikTok again. So when you think about all those and 
and the fact that they know to a certain extent they know what they want. Yeah, a lot of people are Japan now because you can't, you, you don't want to, you don't want to just face through all this. But I mean, is uh, I have a lot of hope, I have a lot of hope, but uh, you no, know, it gets to a point, it's a particular point where you're just going to get tired of it at the end of the day when you're not seeing results, which is why I'm, which is why I'm very scared and I'm very scared. Uh, so they, they, they have to keep seeing results and who can give them results, even for the generation before them, to show them that there is at least some sort of hope. Because no matter how, uh, no matter how much vibes or how much energy they have, if they are not saying that, oh, these are energies giving these results to keep dying down, to just keep going down like a trend. And it's, it's not just be particular to just a set of people, it's particular to everybody. Just the same way almost everybody is giving up on the country and running away from the country. I, I was reading a particular um, article that's the, the great, really great Japa or something, I forgot him. Well, apparently a lot of people left banks this year. A lot of people were located out of the country between September. He's the, the secretary, um, no, sorry, the manager, right? That was earning to something million. Uh, is it that that post? Yeah, apart from that. So I know I know people in that category. To be very honest, I know people who even earn more than that that left the country fully. No, but like so, they need to go and get masters. That's what like blew my mind. Like a manager of Yeah, because they are they are tired. <laughs> no, to be honest, you need to think about so. One one person I spoke to is more about uh, his children. He said he has he has seen it all. And he has no hope for the country. He does not want his own children to go through this at all for whatever reason. Mm. Which is true. If you look at it, you have a child, you are seeing the child like, oh, this is me. I want the child to live a better life than me. You have your own chance at the world to mold someone's life. Mm. <laughs> Do you understand? You don't want the person to actually go through what you've been through. Mm-hmm. You don't want your child to 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 go off shouting up Nepal. Mm-hmm. You, know, you want your child's reality to be very different from what you had access to if you have the money. So a lot of people that have the money, they are tired. Mm-hmm. Most of them even have houses all around. They are tired. I know someone that sold all these properties and decided that next thing is just to go and be masters out of the country. Just to just to leave, he got there he was not even any as much as he was any in Nigeria, but at least he was happy. You know that kind of joy. He told me that for the first time in years that he was just happy. He has not had the same thing he in, in in months. That he's just happy. There's peace. He's not worried about uh, that uh, somewhere. He's not worried about that uh, if you go and buy fuel, he's not clean up the fuel. Just knows that there are some things that have been taken care of. And he's just trying to take care of his family. They should be together. I said his board, that is boring, staying alone, but he can <laughs> sacrifice the boredom. Just have a better life for his students. Students are attending good schools. They can get to, they can get to. And let me even think, when you are raising money, yeah. you know, you have a better opportunity of raising money as a startup founder. He schools in a foreign country than you school in Nigeria. Like you have more than ninety percent chance of raising more money than someone schooling. So when you look at all those factors, if you have the opportunity, you have the, the financial means to do it. Yes, definitely people do it, which is what scares me about the millennial, uh, the Gen Z. Once they see that um once they see that the energy cannot be sustained, they too, they will jump the boats. A lot of people are leaving. I'm very sure by the time the from this August to like maybe like to like December. I know we just keep saying uh, welcome to new dispensation on Twitter on LinkedIn. That's what we keep saying. I'm I'm so sure because last year's was so shocking. Even people that I never thought would leave the country, they left. And people were, and when people were like, ah, you two you left, we're not like ah, am I Buhari? That even Buhari <laughs> left for like six months. So why would they stay? I have people that, that have solid businesses in the country, but they decided to abandon it all because they could not just they could not just face it again. They were just tired. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 a scary, it's scary because the it's another challenge 
it's the brightest set of people that are growing. Yeah. When you look at the, the trends, it's the brightest set of people, the most intelligent people that are earning high. Those are the set of people growing. So when all these people go, people that are going to rule the country in the future are people without white certificates. And they are going to now take the country backwards again, which is what happened. Which is why we are in this current mess. The, the best set of people left because talents. So talents, talents can be hidden. They, they always, that's why they are called talent. They always want to, to compete with the best because that's like their own sort of, that's what boosts, that's the energy they want. Mm-hmm. So when they feel that, oh, this country is not appreciating them enough, they leave. And the set of people that will now rule us are people who have no idea, who are not as intellectually smart or sound as those people that are left. So which means we are now going back to where we were before. So that is that is the challenge. That is the problem that I still see mm. that the uh, country my face. If, if you look at the people that are going to realize they are not the best set of people that can, can, can think of. They are not the smartest mm-hmm. that can really fix up the solution. But, well, you just have to be hopeful that hope cannot fix it all. Just also have to try our best to see what we can do call them to order and well going back to your question i have a lot of hope on uh, gen z but i'm scared i'm skeptical that the energy dies down day two we leave and we're back to square one again okay um yeah and you know it's going to be very difficult for I'm guessing people that were born from 2015, 2010-ish, right? What they are seeing now, they are born into you know, unfortunately, a lot of misery and a lot of mm-hmm. so that's the only reality, right? So I mean, can you imagine them, like Monday morning, you know, in primary school or in secondary school when you are told to sing national anthem, and just having like, why am I even singing this anthem? Like, you know, like what has Nigeria done for me that I'm singing anthem for? Which heroes pass? Like, just asking questions, you know, that will create, you know, a, a generation that might resent the whole nation itself because the nation has really has not offered anything. I really has nothing to offer them. All right. Um, but yeah, I think as you said, let's just remain hopeful. Uh, let's see, do what we can in our spaces and let's see what happens. Fred, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, for explaining feasibly to us. Um, for everybody that has listened, please go and check it out. Like if you're an artist or a business, especially businesses that want to open right in, in, in Ghana or Kenya, <clears throat> as Fred has Right, they offer that service, and you know, for law students or people, you know, in legal firms, right? They also have how they can help you in that. So yeah, once again, thank you. Hopefully, maybe that time you're a tier one company, we'll have another interview, right? And then <laughs> maybe by that point, we're in Nigeria, <laughs> as you said, right? Like Western, <laughs> Western European countries, there's lights, no yeah. general. Well, hopefully mm-hmm. by that point, right? We'll have a conversation. Hopefully, yeah. Where yeah, it's there's a Nigeria. Just have to be open. <laughs> yeah, where there's a Nigeria, we, we all know where we are going to. Yeah, so yeah, Apple, yeah. Apple. <laughs> 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 all right, so, thank you, Fred. Uh, have a wonderful thank evening. you for having me. Yeah, you too. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I'm good luck with the Nigerian dream too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Fred. <laughs> Yeah, cheers.